All right, you guys, so it's Sunday. It's day 18 for me, just to let you guys know, of the quarantine, and I've done a bunch of stuff. I've done some video editing. I've been working on some books. I've been doing some Amazon stuff. Um, I'd like to make a bread pudding for you guys to show you how to do that with a Bunker Buster theme, but I'm feeling like the kitchen is really nasty, and I don't like to show nasty kitchen on TV, except today. So here's what I was thinking. I was thinking, Maybe you don't know how to clean the kitchen. Maybe it's just a daunting task to you. And maybe I can throw some enlightenment about how I get it done really fast, like in 10 or 15 minutes, the whole kitchen. And um, maybe this can help you out. Maybe it can make you feel better and living in a cleaner environment, um, less paranoid about what's going on in the world right now. So let me turn this around. I'm gonna give you a little tour of the kitchen, let you see what's a shaken, a bacon. And then, um, I'm gonna to go to each station of the kitchen and show how I set it up, break it down, clean it up, and make it shine. So, all right, let's get started! Because everybody likes to see it on YouTube. Let's get started! Okay, so I thought that the first thing I would do was give you a little tour about what the current shape of the kitchen is. So it's raining outside, which is why it's kind of dark. Just to let you know there. Let me see if I can zoom around here. So, okay. So it looks like creepy Christmas as we're calling it. So we got stuff all over the counters. Um, we got some dishes put away. We got some dishes on the counter. We've got some clean dishes. We've got cleaning products. We've got stuff like that. So it's not super bad. It's just, it's not film quality and it's kind of annoying for me. So let me show you over here as well. It's like lifting the tripod. Um, we've also got, um, the stove, which this is kind of gross to me. Um, it's a little too dirty for my taste. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's got greasies and guckies and sauces and protein powders and coffee goop and yeah, it's just kind of a mess. So um, no, this is not the worst it could be, but it's also not the best it could be. So um, let's start with this. I've got the lighting over here, so I'm gonna turn that on so just so we can make better film. So let me do that. You guys can see what that looks like. Dun, 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 dun. And we'll put on some overhead lighting. And now, now it looks more like a set. All right, so um, yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, I hope you can I hope you can see me and what's going on over here. I think it's more important to see what's going on over here. So the first thing I like to do when I'm cleaning is put everything away that you can because it's impossible to actually clean, like get to the bottom of things, unless you move stuff that you don't need in the way. So let's get it all out of the way. So these are some terry cloth towels which we're gonna use in a little bit. I'm just gonna set those over there. So got a fruit bowl here. I've got some bananas that I'm going to be making some banana bread with the next couple days. And then I got a bunch of apples at the little Mexican grocery because they looked great. So put all of the fruits and the vegetables away. I've got a variable cornucopia plastic bags. Ones that are broken I'll throw away. The other ones I will um, put in the storage area. Try to reuse things as much as possible. And we've got our bananas, which I don't know if you guys ever see, but these are always on the back corner. Like with like. I just like to get rid of all of the extra confusion. Normally we don't have as much bread, but uh, we are in survival mode, I guess. So that's fine. We're going to do some stuff with all of this bread either today or tomorrow. So. More bread. We got a lot of bread. Okay, now I know that side of the counter's thing is already good the other day. So that is Cooter's gym water. All right, so things we got. We got this. Put our mixture of bread here again. Butter can go away. Onion can go in the box. Never put your good knives in the dishwasher. And I'm just putting stuff away over here too. And I'm not rushing, this is my normal speed. All right, now we got that, we got that. All right. Okay, you can 
see, we've made a huge difference just by putting away stuff that we don't need out. So let's go to the sink area because that's next. Okay, over here in the sink area, we have a couple things that need to be washed and then we have a whole bunch of cleaning products here. So here's what we need to do. We need to put this one away because that's for the bathroom. We don't need that right now. All right, this is hand soap and it just needs to stay out. This is an empty hand soap, which I'm gonna wash. So my main cleaning products are, I like this spritz, I like that to scrub, and I like that for the dishes. You can use whatever you like. Now, for cleaning utensils, I like to have a scrub brush because it's hard and it's easy. I also have a kind of gross sponge here, but we'll clean that up a little bit. And finally, I have two sets of terry towels here. I have one that's gonna stay dry. There it is, stay dry, and one that's gonna be my wet terry towel. Yes, it's torn, but it's a cleaning rag. That's what it's for. Okay, so let's do the dishes real quick. Since I don't have a lot of dishes here, I'm just gonna wash them by hand. This was some rice. And I like Dawn. Not sponsored, just my favorite. I like the way it cuts grease. Uh, I did soak this, it had rice in it, and I wanted to make sure all the rice comes out. Just scrub all the surfaces to get the grease out. Then go around, make sure you get the rim. Feel it with your hand. I think we got all the parts. All right, then I have a cloth over here just to put everything on. Can you see that? You can. All right, wait for the water to get hot because we like disinfecting properties. All right, look at that. Shiny clean. Next, I do my knife. Be careful with your knife. Turn the water off so I can wash the rest of the goodies. Temperature probe for the salmon. I don't want to get the salmonella. <laughs> All right, and finally, I'm just going to rinse this bottle off. It was in the bathroom, uh, and they're probably going to refill for it. So, no reason it can't be clean. So that's our hand soap. So we got all the all the main junk out here. I'm just gonna scoop and get any big crumbs. Whoops. Rinse out the sink with the crumbs. And there we go. Okay. Now I like to make up some little uh, wash water here, so make it pretty warm. Yeah, it's pretty good. You want to cut the grease? Then I like, again, I like Dawn. I just make a water solution here with that. And then I use the terry cloth with the holes. Get it in the nice soapy water, get it nice and warm. Now let me show you some tricks. So most people would wad this up and squeeze it, and you can do that, but let me show you a kitchen trick. For professional kitchens, take it like this, just pull it through. If you need to really get it dry, just give it a twist. That's really dry. Okay, you can see we've got our wash water there. So I'm gonna back you up again here. Okay, start at one side and keep swooping and swooping it all towards the sink. Scooping and swooping, and get all the big chunks. Put it on the sink. Give yourself a rinse. You can't have too many rinses. There you go. Got a, a grease cutting rag here. And then just give it a good scrub. Now, I know these aren't too bad because I just cleaned them the other day, but stuff happens, especially in a cooking kitchen where you are filming all the time. I'm also feeling with my hand when I rub across this to see if I feel any stickies or junkies. Don't forget the back wall. 
You do this every couple of days. You do this every couple of days, then you won't get buildup. And look at that. Front of your cupboards a little bit. Always little splashes that happen. And look at that, this side of the kitchen is now clean. Boop, boop. Cupboards are clean, counters are clean. All right, let's go over here, show you what I'm gonna do around the sink. Okay, I know that these bottles are clean, but just rubbing them down, set these aside. Because having clean bottles makes your kitchen look clean too. Don't forget the bottoms, they get moldy, they get crusty, they get yucky, germs hide there. Let's give a rinse. And a rinse. All right. Move some more goodies. Okay, my dishes have dried well enough. Nice hot water helps your stuff dry faster. You can give it a good dry, or if you need to, you can give it more time to air dry. Always put your knives away carefully. Dry them nice. Put it in the block. And you notice I just keep moving around in a circle here. Okay, this towel I think has had it. It's been here for a few days. We'll wrap that up and toss it in the laundry. These towels are still good and clean. Okay, then just repeat over here. The same process, go in, scoop around, get behind, get under, get over, get through. Swoop towards the sink, swoop towards the sink. Swoop, swoop, swoop towards the sink. Get all the crusties. Amazing to me where f stuff gets to. All the veggies. Get the back wall and around the goodies. Okay. That's looking pretty good. All right, let's turn you towards the towards the stove. This is the part that was actually making me kind of crazy, which inspired this video. So. I like to wipe down the coffee maker. You see that? You can. And behind the coffee maker, get the counters nice, get the backsplash nice. All right, then I just like to get the big chunkies if I can. All the big chunkies. Okay, so then here's what I do. I like to take the grates off. Mine are easy to remove, just like that. Hey, that's great, like so. All right, then I take these off and I just toss, toss these in the wash water. Easy to wash. And take off these parts because they don't usually get that dirty because they're underneath. Once in a while I wash them, but these seems to be pretty good. And they're aluminum. Okay, so then we have this whole surface here. What I like to do is I like to use the Clorox. Give it a good spritz. This cuts the grease. 
gets any stains. And then I was mentioning the brush. This is the perfect application. I just go around, give everything a good scrub, try to try to push all the crumbs to the middle. Get the backsplash. A lot of people forget the backsplash. I think it's very important. The brush is good because it allows me to get around all of these little screws and doodads and it loosens up stuff and it scrubs good without scratching it scrubs well it scrubs well without scratching uh, and this stuff really breaks up the fat because that's usually what gets on here okay here's a perfect example see this that's some cheese now mine has a little scraper here so it's great just turn it over give it a little scrape i can feel it come off throw that back in the water Okay, so think about this in two or three parts. So we're just going to take this and get the big chunks and any of the loose stuff from off of here. Just like we did the counters. A little bit of cheese there. Again, I like the Dawn because it really breaks up the grease. Be careful not to hit your sparker points, whatever those are officially called. All right, try to get your big chunks and rinse out your bag. If yours is dirtier than this, you could at this point give it another spritz. Mine's not too bad. Okay, so this is a nice clean rag. So now I can do some fine cleaning, go around, make sure I got all the spots. I can feel a little something there. In that case, That's what my sponge is for. I can come back and get the scrubby parts. Use all of the surface of your rag. Keep rotating it so that it picks up more and more stuff. All right, we're doing pretty good. I'm going fast to show you how fast this can be done. Hit the counters. Hit the backsplash. Give it a rinse. All right, let's give it one final rub down. This is your fine tuning. This is your oven keeps turning on. Okay. And then as you're doing it, you can put stuff back in place so it looks nice. One final on the backsplash. And look at that. Now, remember our dry towel, go through, buff it up, make sure you got all the goodies. Really shows you what you clean. How about that? How about that? Looks pretty good, you guys. Okay, so this side of the kitchen is done. So let's go back to the sink. All right, I'm going to show you finally what I do over here with these parts. So we can put these aside because they're not dirty. Put out a cloth for our clean stuff to sit on. All right, then I just take these last pieces, give them a little scrubby do. Okay, so now we got this. Look around, see if you missed anything in your kitchen. And if not, you can let your water go, like such. And give everything a good rinse. Okay, then here comes the magic for me. I really like the soft kind of scrub cleanser. Uh, it's good for stainless steel and things like this. I just give this a little shaky-poo. Because when I'm filming, I want everything to be clean and then gather it up and uh, give the sink a good scrub. Not only does it disinfect everything, but it looks better. Or shall I say, not only does it look better, it disinfects everything because it's got chlorine bleach in it. And it's nice because it turns everything, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not shiny, whatever the word is. 
mat. There we go. Get the corners, get it well. If you don't feel like you can get the corners well, again, that's where your brush comes in. Grab some of the cleanser, go around the edge. And then, depending on how, how nasty your sink is, I also like to get things like this. Ours gets kind of gross. And also here, and the edge and the crooks, and then rinse it all down. So you can see the utensils get clean, like my sponge gets bleached out. If you rub it back and forth, you can get anything stuck in it out. It's also a good way to disinfect your sponge. Again, rinse everything. You get up here. But I also have the advantage of having this guy. Get all the nooks and crannies. How nice does that look? Okay, and rinse off any final things you think might be dirty. So we've got our clean terry cloth again. We can shine up all of our chrome. Wipe off the countertops. Boop, boop, ba do. That's our normal living space for these things. Cleaning products. How good does that look? And that was like, what, under 20 minutes for the whole kitchen. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good. We'll put that in the laundry. Da-da. Get rid of those. Da-da. How good does that look, you guys? The big reveal. The big reveal. Look at that, you guys. A whole kitchen cleaned. In about 20 minutes, top to bottom. If you needed to sweep, you could do that. If you need to load the dishwasher, you could do that. Um, I think that's pretty good for 20 minutes. What do you think? And that stove? Yes! Making it happen. That's it. That is your 20 minute cleaning of your whole kitchen, including the stove. I mean, it's not hard. You just remember, divide your products, put everything away, move the stuff to the sides that you don't need to clean or that are food or such like that. Clean the counters towards the sink. Do what's in the sink. Clean the sink out and use it as your bin. Clean your oven or your stove. Wipe it all down. Rinse it all out. Disinfect it. Boom. Done. I mean, yeah, it takes like 20 minutes if you just work at it and get it done. And of course, practice. Having good tools help. Having some good cleaning products really helps because it cuts the grease and that kind of stuff. Um, and if you have other stuff you might need to pre-soak, pre-soak it. There you go. All right, you guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Learning how to clean your kitchen while in your quarantine in 20 minutes. All right, you guys. I'm Robert Jones. I uh, hope you guys subscribe. Come back for more. We're struggling. We're souping. We're doing it all. All right, you guys. Take care.